is going to be the next one, number 11. So let's try a real problem where we have to relate KP to KC. Uh, that would be a number 11. This is not a difficult thing to do, but I do want you to see it uh, and do a problem like this before you're stuck doing them on your own. Uh, so we have this relationship, KP equals KC times RT to the delta n power. Uh, delta n of gas. So watch out, make sure you always check your physical states and make sure that you are just taking the delta n of the gas part of it. So we can go ahead, we're trying to solve for KP in this one. We know, it says, and I hopefully, uh, I'm hoping that you caught yesterday, whenever you have a problem that gives you just K, it doesn't specify if it's KC or KP, we know which one it is, right? No. Just K means KC. Really? Yes. You didn't catch that yesterday? Oh, never. She played the video very, like, quiet. I okay. Thought it was quiet. It's fine. So uh, in number 11, where it says the equilibrium constant k is 0.28, that's this thing right there. So 0 0.28 times r times t, which is 0 0.0821 times the temperature. Now it was 700 degree, no, sorry, not 700, 900 degree reaction. Add 273 to it, so it's 1173 is the temperature of it in Kelvin. What's the delta n? Negative 2. Right, <coughs> negative 2. We have five moles of gas on the left, producing three moles of gas on the right. Yeah? Oh. Yeah, you see how I get that? Yeah, then you just do the math. What's that? Oh, yeah, because we had a reaction where there are five moles of gas going to three moles of gas. So delta N would be the total moles of gas on the uh, product minus the reaction. It's easy. Yeah. Okay, so it's a multiple choice question. <laughs> what? Oh, did I say finally? I didn't hear it. It's quiet enough. Did you get C for your answer? Yes. Are you doing the calculation? Yes. Yes. Let's see. It's C. It's C. Okay, so let's go ahead on, and uh, I'd like to introduce you to a new technique uh, with equilibrium problems. This is going to lead us into a huge number of different kinds of problems that we can do. Uh, I'm going to put this up. Wait, we learned this last year. You did learn equilibrium last year, yeah. No, we did this ice tables. Yeah, you did. Some of you did ice tables last year. Not everybody. So. Um, yeah, we're going to do a lot of ice tables in this class. I want you all to see it um, and be ready to use them a lot. Ice tables are not here to be, um, to be something that I beat you over the head with. Uh, they're not difficult. They're good because they help us to stay organized. It's good to be organized with these. So um, I'll show you this one with an ice table. And then once we do that, just about every equilibrium problem that we'll do We'll construct an ice table to help us. Um, the ice table is just going to be one. And by the way, I keep mentioning ice table. I'm not talking about frozen water ice. We're we don't sit down at a table made of ice. Um, it's, a, it's just a, a, an organizing way to present our information in the problem. ICE. Uh, and it just means. No, no, that, no, that was fine. That's fine. It looks, well, let's look at the problem first. <laughs> number 13. Look at number 13 with me. At 250 degrees, the equilibrium constant Kp for the reaction below is 1.8. So here's the reaction. PCl5 breaks out. You can see what happens. Sufficient PCl5 is put into a reaction vessel to give an initial pressure of 2.74 atmospheres at 250 degrees. Calculate the pressure of PCl5 after the system has reached equilibrium. So we're going to have to do some math on this one. Initially, that's what our I stands for, uh, we have these quantities. 
The problem tells us that we start with 2.74 atmospheres of the reactant. <coughs> the problem didn't say anything about how much product was added, so you can assume if it didn't say anything about the uh, products, that they start at zero. Always assume that the products start with zero, unless the problem makes it very clear that you didn't start with zero. Yeah? Wait, how did you get 2.74? That's good for what it says here. It says sufficient PCL5 is put into the vessel to give an initial pressure of 2.74 atmospheres. So I just got out of the problem. Oh, the initial pressure. pressure. Yep. So now, in the reaction, these quantities are going to change. All of them are going to change. Does everybody agree that the reaction is going to proceed to the right? Yes. It has to. How do we know for sure that it goes to the right? What do you think? Because the KP value is like, I mean. That, that's good enough. It has a value. There is a value for K. And so as long as we, we know that this reaction is going to come to equilibrium, what is equilibrium? It means that the reaction has, has made products and then it stops. And there's still reactants present and they just quit reacting. And there's products that are there um, and they stop changing as well. So yeah, if we have some K greater than zero, it doesn't even have to be bigger than one. It, K greater than zero means some products are going to be made. There's another thing that I told you about. I'm going to mention this several times. The Q value. I had introduced the Q value as well. Q is the product of reactants, but you're not necessarily at equilibrium. So in the beginning of the reaction, the Q would be 0 over 2.74. If Q is less than K, the reaction will go to the right, until Q equals K, at which point it stops. There are some cases where Q is greater than K. If Q is greater than K, the reaction is going to come back this way. And that can happen. Uh, so for the first few, we're always going to see the Q is less than K and it's going to go to the right. So the rest of our ice table then is going to look like this. Here's why I call it an ice table. Initial, change, equilibrium. So we're going to just track what's going on with each of the reactants and products through this table. Once we get down to the equilibrium line, on the equilibrium line, when we have the quantities, that's where we take the products over the reactants, and that's equal to K, right? The equilibrium amounts of everything uh, is what we plug into this. You wouldn't start with the initial. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill out our uh, ice table. But before we do that, notice what the question is asking for. What are we trying to find in this problem? Pressure. Of what? We're given the initial pressure of PCL5. The question is, what is the pressure of PCL5 at equilibrium? When the reaction stops, what are we going to get for that? OK. So since I know this reaction is going to go to the right, I know that the 2.74 atmospheres of reactant is going to go down. And these zeros are going to go up. Some of the products are going to be made. So right now, I don't know how much this is going to change, but I know it's going to go down. So I'm just going to call it change minus x. It's going to go down by something, but I just don't know what it is yet. And then in the products, since it's a one-to-one -one ratio between the reactant and both products, they'll both go up by x. And so at equilibrium, uh, I'm going to go ahead and write out my equilibrium line, even though it's going to be in terms of x for every term. 2.74 minus x is going to be uh, the equilibrium concentration of the reactant. And then just 0 plus x, that's going to be x, and that's going to be x. There's a lot of x terms there. But I wonder if we can solve for x. No. Unfortunately, it's a yes. And it is unfortunate when you see what you have to do because of this. Kp equals 18. That's the equilibrium concentration or the pressures of the products over the reactant. Uh, and so that's equal to x times x, which is x squared. Sorry, the next problem is going to be 18. Yeah, this is 1.8. You're confused? I, it's 1.8. Oh, oh. Sorry. The next K, oh, and that one has the equilibrium constant of 18. I didn't write that up there. But yeah, it's 1.8. So I need to fix it. I apologize. 
Okay, so the k value is one, uh, x squared over this term, 2.74 minus x. It does look like algebra, doesn't it? It smells like algebra. Yeah. Not only is it algebra, what do we have to do here to solve for x? Got to do the quadratic formula. You do, you've got an x, ter x squared term. Quadratic formula. We know the song, right? You had to learn a song to remember the quadratic formula. What? X is equal to negative b plus or minus, minus square root, root of b squared minus b squared, squared minus four ac. Right. Hi. Thank you. You may have a calculator that will do the quadratic formula for you if you just tell it what the coefficients are. Yes. Yeah. I have it. But, but uh, it looks like I, I've been looking at calculators all day. Some have it and some don't. I figured they would all come programmed with it. If you don't already have it, if you've got a TI 84, um, you can get it. You can download it from TI's website, I think, on your calculator. But you know how to do the quadratic formula anyway. Let's just do it the old fashioned way. I will tell you, you will not have to do a quadratic formula problem without a calculator. You can use a calculator. However, you can't use, still, the graphing calculators, programmable calculators, on even the quizzes. Oh, As always, not right. Ah, oh, yeah, it is. They, they are. You've got you to gotta learn that and know it. All right. So go ahead. Simplify this thing. Get it into the, what we call the standard form. Use the quadratic. And let's see what you get. Are we actually doing it? We We're doing it. Doesn't know about those two Doesn't know about what? Yeah. Oh. oh. No, I don't know. Is it No, it's my wallet. I'm trying to use the whole amount of my license. It's with your lab book. You, 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 you put your wallet on one of, on that table. Try this. Do this. Let's try to focus. And then they couldn't. Did you catch me wishing you a happy birthday yesterday? Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, that was good. I'm sorry that I missed it. I hope you had a nice day. All right, so that's, what do you get for X? Look, you guys sitting around waiting for somebody else to do it. Shame yeah. on you. Shame on you. I'm not going to give you the answer. What? Why not? What? I'll do graphic. I do graphics. I'm kidding. I'm not Yes, you can graph it. Find the roots. And as you know, when we, this is going to be the formula for a, a parabola, it's a polynomial, you're going to get two answers for x. Only one of them makes physical sense. You're going to have to throw one of your x values out. You'll get used to that. What's that? Yeah, well, yeah, one of them, one of the values is going to give you something up here that's negative. It's either going to give you an outright negative number or it might be greater than 2.74. So then when you subtract that, you'll get a negative number too. So just know that you're always going to get a bogus uh, solution for one of your axes and you'll keep the other one. Mr. Moore, what if you give us two good solutions? I won't. It doesn't happen. It doesn't sound like it. Tasha, your eyes, your eyes are red. Tasha. Oh my God, Tasha! Tasha, I have some cough drops. Got an answer? If you have an answer, just keep it to yourself. Just let the slackers pay for it. Okay. I mean, you can't use. You were just singing it. Wait. Yes, you can. Just more my calculator is too basic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So that was number 13. When you get a value for x, I want to remind you, listen to this, when you get x out of doing the quadratic formula, 
X is not the final answer. Don't just get X and say, oh, and I'll tell you, the value of X is one of the five choices, of course. Look up here at the ice table. I put a box around the solution we were trying to get. The question was, what was the pressure of PCL5 at equilibrium? The value of X that you find, you gotta subtract it from 2.74 to get the answer. So just watch out for that. Make sure you understand what the question is asking for. <coughs> It's 1.5. For the final answer, for the uh, value of x. Value of x. I don't try out the other solution, but 1.5 makes sense. Yeah, that was obviously logical. Yeah, one of them is going to give you an impossible yeah. answer, so, so yeah. Right. So it's, yeah. I know, that's like the question right? Anybody have any questions about this? Why do I still have a B and A thing? All right, let's move on to number 12. For number 12, we now have this equation, SO2 plus NO2 equation. It says the equilibrium constant is 18. That's where I got the 18 from, at 1,200 degrees. If one mole of SO2 and two moles of NO2 are placed into a 20-liter container, what concentration of SO3 will be present in equilibrium? So this is a problem. It tells us what the K value. I'm going to go ahead and write it. I'd like to have it up here. K is 18. And we're going to have to do an ice table for this. Anytime you have an equilibrium problem that you need to track one of the one or more of the uh, concentrations or pressures, make an ice table. With this uh, beginning, I always like to tell everybody, you're not going to imagine how many ice tables you're going to be doing from now until February. You do so many ice tables. If I could give you a quarter for every ice table that you're going to do, you'd be doing really well. We do a lot of ice tables. Yeah. Wait, what did you actually get for the answer 13? Oh, I wasn't telling. So whatever you got is right. Oh, you don't have to do any further solving? Yes, it's fine. <laughs> Tell me about a solution. The x value was 1.5. Really? Uh, but Colby, that's not the final answer. The final answer is uh, 2.74 minus 1.5, yeah, really? which is 1.24. Okay. Did you get that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So now number 12. This K value, it didn't tell us KC or KP. That means it was KC. And what was what does KC mean? KC is the what? KC is the concentration. It's the, not just the concentration, the something about the concentrations. It's the ratio of the concentrations, products over reactants, uh, concentration. Now, that means this. Now listen to this. When you're given a KC in a problem, make sure that you're filling your ice table out with molarities. KC is the ratio of the concentration. The problem doesn't give you molarity, it gives you moles. I want you to be aware of that. So, yeah, when you start filling this thing out, don't put moles into an ice table. You either put concentrations, if you're given KC, or you fill it with pressures, if you're given KP, or if it asks you to find those things. Are you with me? So that means we need to figure out what the molarities are, which is not a big deal, because you're given moles, and you're told what size the container is. Regan, why are you doing that? <laughs> what is Regan doing? He's using this pencil to like put it by the camera so that Distracting the viewers. Yeah, bro. The viewers are already pretty low on his website. Bro. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm a viewer. I have a viewer. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm thank, you. Thank, thank you for viewing. Why don't you become famous doing chemistry videos? I think it's obvious. Yeah, There's we're getting chemistry teachers. Getting chemistry teachers. <laughs> so All right. So anyway, uh, you're given one mole of SO2, but you're, it's telling you that it's in a 20 liter container. So what's one divided by 20? 0.05. It's 1 divided by 10 divided by 2, right? 1.5. No, not 1.5. Um, 0.05. So 0 0.05 molarity for that. And then the NO2 was 1 mole divided, no, 2 moles divided by 20, which is 0 0.1 molarity. So yeah, make sure that you put molarities or pressures into the ice table. Wait, I think it's 
The problem doesn't say anything about the products. That means that they're both zero initially. So just like last time, we know the reaction is going to go to the right. Therefore, and what is the question asking for? The question is, what is the equilibrium concentration of SO3? That's what we're going to try to find. So we know that this thing goes to the right. That means that these are going to go down. Since all the coefficients are ones, makes it uh, so we don't have to worry about anything in terms of uh, doubling or tripling. We just say minus x's as it shifts away from the reactants and plus x's as it goes to the product. So at equilibrium, we have 0.05 minus x and 0.1 minus x. And over on the right side, we have x and x. And so when we solve for x on this one, that is our answer. See that? Yeah. OK, so let's set up the math and see if we can do this this time. Kc equals 18, which equals x squared over 0 0.05 minus x times 0.1. Looks like the FOIL method. Yeah, not, you, we're not factoring. Factoring only happens in math class when all the numbers are perfect. In the real world, you never get to factor. <laughs> no, it's not. So, sorry, I ran my numbers together. It's 0 0.10 right there. Now, there was a lot of people having trouble coming up with the mathematical answer on this. Go ahead and take a moment <laughs> to see if you can try to do this. <laughs> Try it. Do I do it? Do you This working out. Turns out that there's a dirty little secret to this problem. What? Just, let's see what it is when you get an answer. There's two x rays. That's all. It's a secret. I will tell you. Okay, so there's a secret. No, there's a solution. I got the answer, but it could be two things. Uh-uh. There's only one good answer.
Wait, it could be two. There's two answers. I feel like one of them is. No! No, One of them won't because of some chemistry things. Wait, what's the reason the other one doesn't work? We talk about the reasons. There's only one good answer. Oh, I know the reason. I could be wrong. Because, like, no, 0 0.1, what if you put into that, that'd be negative. You get a negative concentration. So only the one will work. And that's always going to be true. Um, yeah, so one of your roots may wind up being bigger than one of these, so that would give you a negative value in your uh, concentration or your pressure. So that's, that's the bogus one. No. The dirty little secret is that you didn't have to do the problem. There's only one legitimate answer of the five answers that are given. Oh, you could just plug them four. in. Oh my god. You could just plug them in. I didn't do it enough. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you just plug them in. Wait. <laughs> well, on the test, catch me. I did not do it enough. I did not do it enough. Out of laziness? I did it before I did it. Out of laziness. But I just got it right. Why do we not even have to do the problem? Well, take a look. I want you to consider this. And keep an open mind and open eye out for things like this. If this reaction didn't come to equilibrium, but it went to completion, which one of these two reactants would be the limiting reactant? When we have equilibrium, we don't worry about, equal, with, about a limiting reactant because it doesn't end. Um, but which one of these would be the limiting? That one, the smaller amount, right? So that means you can't make any more than 0.05 molarity of either of those. Because that's all that you have. Only one of these is less than 0.05. Uh, that's the answer. You feel silly? Wait, say that again. See how um, we can do the 0.05 dictates that I can't make any more than 0.05 of either of these, otherwise that would run out. I mean, the, when that runs out, I can make at most 0.05 molarity of these. There's only one answer that's less than 0.05. So that's got to be the answer. Now you know that if you ever have a none of the above, then you're stuck. You've got to do the problem and figure it out. But in this case, there was no none of the above choices. So yeah, the only possible answer for x is less than 0.05, equal or less. It can't even be equal to 0.05 because it comes to equilibrium, so there's going to be some reactant left. Now, mathematically, were you able to come up with 0.048? You have to use the FOIL method down here, get a quantity, then multiply it by 18, and then move the x squared over. So your leading coefficient is going to be 17. It's 17 x squared minus something plus something. You got that, and then you did the quadratic? So yeah, you should get 0.048. Yeah. Yeah. You should give you. Yeah. Did you not get that? No, no, no. You had it. Okay. What was uh, anybody that did the uh, the mathematical work correctly? What was the standard form equation that you got? It was 17 x squared. Yeah, I remember this right. Yep. Yeah, you just do the quadratic from there. Equals zero. You can try to factor. Anything else about this one? I only have one more for you. We've got 10 minutes. We can tackle this thing in about five. Yes. What's that? Okay, I, he was, I wasn't the only person who was Would you look at number 17 with me? This one, so I want you to see that equilibrium problems can have a, a big variety of, of things that you're asked for or twists that can be applied to a problem. This one is a, a twisted one as well. There's lots of different ways that questions can be asked. For number 17 on the last page, it says, the brown gas NO2 and the clear gas N2O4 uh, exist in equilibrium. And here's our chemical equation. In an experiment, 0.625 moles, uh, there's that moles again, we're going to have to change that, uh, of N2O4 was introduced into a 5 liter vessel and allowed to decompose until it reached equilibrium with NO2. The concentration of N2O4 at equilibrium was 0.075. Calculate the Kc.
So what's the KC value? If we want KC, that means we need the equilibrium amounts of these two uh, substances. So we're going to have to make an ice table. Okay, now I want you to listen to this one. You're not going to like this. The problem says that this is our chemical equation. Whatever chemical equation the problem gives you, you keep. Don't flip it around. Why would you want to flip it around? Because what does it tell us about the reaction? It says, in an experiment, 0.625 moles of N2O4 was put into a container. So it's, the problem is starting with product. The reactant is NO2. Does it say any NO2 is added to this container? No. So we're starting with only product and no reactant. So what does the reaction have to do? It's got to go back to the left. But we keep the reaction like, do not turn it around just because you want the reaction to go right to left, left to right. Um, you, can, you can have it go to the left, and it does in this case. So um, the N2O4, now remember that we have to use molarity, not just moles. So we have the moles and liters. It says 0.625 moles into a five liter container. That means the initial concentration was 0.125 molarity. Initially, the NO2 value is zero. And so now, uh, it also gives us one other thing, that the N2O4, uh, the concentration at equilibrium, way down here, is 0.075. So that means that the reaction did go to the left. The N2O4 went down. Can we tell how much it went down by? Yeah, just subtract the two. You can figure out the change in N2O4. So what I have in blue, that's what the problem gives us. And it asks us to find Kc. So we need both of the values uh, on the equilibrium line of the reactant and the product. OK, well, let's do that. Um, I'm going to use a different color to fill in the rest of this. If I started with 0.125 and it went down to 0.075, how much did it change by? It changed by 0.05 molar. Yeah, so since it went down, we're going to make that change a negative. What does that say about the NO2? No, it goes up twice that much because of the 2 to 1 ratio. So, uh, yeah, so our reactant is actually being produced. And I know how strange that sounds, but that's what happens. Uh, I'm going to write it like this, plus 2 times 0.05. Just so you can see, I'm including or considering the fact that we've got a coefficient ratio. And so 2 times 0.05 is 0.1. Do you just divide? Huh? No, you multiply. Oh, what do you mean divide? Yeah, for the oh, for the final. Yeah, yeah, I thought you meant to go from there to there. Yeah. And then now, uh, we can go ahead and do the K. The KC value is going to be that concentration divided by that. But does everybody understand what I mean by it? When the problem gives you the chemical equation, even though they gave you that products were being added and the reaction goes to the left, you have to leave the chemical equation the way that the problem gave it to you. Now, I guess if you want to be an outlaw, you can go ahead and turn it around and then find the K. Just know that you're going to find the inverse of the answer that is on here, right? Because remember, when you turn a reaction around, you get the inverse K. You remember that? OK. So, but I would say, just leave it like that. You know that it's going to go to the left. It's fine. The product goes down. The reactant goes up. And we have our values that we need. So the KC is 0 0.075 over what? 0.075. Uh-uh, point one, but we're not done. Yes, squared. So not only did we have to worry about doubling the concentration when we use the coefficient ratio, but now when we're using uh, the, the K expression, if you have a coefficient, it gets raised to that power. So yeah, we, we do have to consider the coefficients twice. One more, we're going from one thing to another, and then the second time adding the, um, uh, the coefficients as exponent. So now this is very simple. It's 0.075 divided by 0.01, 7.5. Anybody have any questions about that or anything? 
Okay, so we'll do more equilibrium tomorrow. Keep in mind there is a reading quiz coming up. It's not till Thursday, but maybe it wouldn't be bad. And it's not a bad reading assignment. It's Le Chatelier's principle. Uh, it's a couple of pages in there. Last year. You should have learned it last year.